Okay, hello guys. So this is APCSP Unified Review Data Analysis by Caillou, and today we're going to go through data, big data, and bias. So before we go into data, let's go into storing data sets. So they can. So before we go in deep into data, we let's go into storing data sets. So in this course, we'll be learning about different methods for storing and managing data, and these they will be text files, and they are plain text, so like just pure text storing data in a, in a simple readable format. And it's also just like TXT or C CSV. And second one we have is the spreadsheet. Spreadsheet. This is this is uh, when storing data in grid, grid format uh, and with rows and columns and it is often using file types like XLS which is Excel spreadsheet uh, and XLSX, which is Excel spreadsheet, so just like spreadsheets but in different different formats basically, and they are mostly used for when data can be organized in cells and manipulated through formulas, and for sorting, and fil filtering, and they're like the data analysis simple and can do simple calculations and create create visual visualization for you. And the third one we have would be the database. So, so let's go into database and then I'm going to show you code that is going to show you how to uh, store data in the database. So databases are structures collections of data which store in tables and each, co each contains a row and column similar to a spreadsheet, but like unlike, sp unlike spreadsheet, database like uses specialized software to manage it. So like the SQL, so this is one, one, one of them I'm going to show you right now, and it is used for storing, storing and managing large data, data sets with complex relationships. Um, here's an example using database, so this one is using the SQLite and, re and relational database in general. This database stores in tables which are organized in rows and columns, and this is, uh, I'm going to show you how this code is going to handle the data. So we, here we see the, so after we took a look at the storing data in in different methods, we can take a look at the patterns in data sets. So we can see here are data and they are put, being put into Excel. And here they obviously belong to the spreadsheet story. And as you can see here, we have two types of trends so one is downwards tr downward trend so here you can take it as x y values basically so when the x value is going increasing the y value is decreasing so this is like going like a downward trend so as you can see in the graph it goes down still the y value gets smaller as the x gets bigger and on the other hand you have the upward trend so this trend is when the x value is getting bigger Y value is getting bigger at the same time too, so they're both getting bigger. And if we only go go deeper, we can check like this. So for example, here you see there here's the a really rough graph. So you can see that here's many up and downs. And if we want to determine if determine if it's an upward or a downward trend, so we just look at the end of it. So if it goes up, so it's an upward trend. If it goes down, then it's a downward. So you don't really have to care about the middle middle ones. And now let's have a little understanding of the big error data. So this refers to the period in in the history, which is recently, and it roughly started in like the two twenties, two thousands. My my bad. And then when advancement in technology enabled the collection, storage, and analysis of massive amounts of data, and the big data transformed industries, research, and society. And this created both opportunities and challenges for the data and the community, yes. Now let's look at what is big data. So big data refers to extremely larger and complex data sets and, are, and that traditional data processing softwares cannot handle efficiently. And like examples of them could be social media, internet, search engines and scientific research research and experiments. And if you want to see 
how we define the big data, we gotta look at these three parts. So this is volume, velocity, and variety. They together make up the uh, character characteristics of big data. And volume is the sheer amount of data that is generated, and velocity is the speed at which data is created, processed, and analyzed. And variety is the diversity of the data sources and formats. This includes structured data and unstru unstructured data, like videos, social media, posts, and emails. Some challenges with big data could be privacy and security, and data storage and management. This one is because storing massive data requires in ro robust infra infrastructure and data management strategies. And scientific organizations often rely on data centers like cl cloud storage or some other distribu distributed storage systems. And then some, some other challenges could be data quality and then cleaning it because large data are often noisy and unstructured and this requires extensive cleaning before analysis. And one other last one I would like to talk about is the data sharing and privacy. Uh, because collecting and storing massive amount of personal data is actually pretty dangerous, putting so much data into a big pile. So that, does, that is a big concern of the big data. So now let's look at the last, last part of our unit, unit review. So this one is mechanical learning algorithm. So they allow systems to learn patterns from data and make predictions, and then they can improve over time. So let's take a deeper look at the types of machine learning. So there are su supervised learning algorithms, un unsupervised, and re reinforcement. So first we have the supervised learning algorithm. So in this in this algorithm, the it is trained. It is trained on a labeled data set, and so this means that each input has a corresponding output, and the model will learn the relationship between inputs and outputs, and then use this to make predictions on the new data. And in unsuper unsupervised algorithm, it is when you're giving unlabeled data and must find patterns in, or groups within the data on its own. And while in reinforcement learning, uh, th this one, the agent will learn to make decisions by interacting with an environment. And then it receives feedback in the form of reward or penalties. So if, it's, if the result is good for itself or bad for itself, basically. And then it aims to maximize cumulative rewards over time. So th it will learn and try to always find the right way by keep trying all the ways basically that's it and now we can take a look at the neural network so neural networks are class of machines learning algorithm model uh, and they're modeled loosely on structure of the human brain so they consist of layers of interconnected no nodes which i'll explain later and then there are different ways of training new neural networks. So one of them is forward, forward propagation. So this is a process of passing inputs through the network layer by layer. And this one also calculates the activation and outputs. And then they also have the loss function, mean squared error, cross and entropy, and back propagation, which we're not going to be looking too close into it. So we can first, before we go into deep, we can first look at the three uh, basic layers. So one of them is the out input layer, output layer, hidden layer, and the output layer. So the input layer is the first one, which receives the raw data and passes it to the hidden layer. And then the hidden layer will transform inputs into patterns that are learned during training, and then it will pass on to the output layer. And this final layer will provide output of the model. So we can go into deeper how it trains. So here we first start with the initialization. So a neutral network starts with random values for its weight. So the parameter adjusts how strongly each input affects the each neural. And these weights need to be uh, fine-tuned in to make accurate predictions. And then we have the 
feeding data, which is also forwarding propagation. So here the network is fed at like an input. It's usually an image, text, or a number, and then it flows through all layers of the network. And each each neuron processor this input applying weights and a function called active activation function in order to get an output. <clears throat> and then we have the calculating error. So this one is kind of like a check. So the network here predicts prediction is compared to the actual answer. And if the the difference between the prediction and the real answer is called a loss or an error. And the goal is to minimize this loss so the prediction gets closer to the an correct answer that we want to get. And then we have the adjusting weights. So this is also back, back rectification. So through this process, the network calculates how much each weight contributes to the error. And then it slightly adjusts each weight in the direction that will reduce the error. So it will slowly try to make the answer right into at the end the final answer which is which is going to be totally matching with the answer we want and then on step five we repeat the process because as we said it is slowly adjusting each time so over time at at, at some point we will get the right answer and then at last we have the stopping so the training stops when the network is uh, consistently making good predictions so meaning the loss is low or correct so that's it for today, thank you for watching.